I would now further examine a specific substance related to a topic already discussed. As previously mentioned, psychedelics are a class of hallucinogenic drugs whose primary effect is to trigger non-ordinary states of consciousness. An example we will look at in a bit more detail is LSD, which stands for lysergic acid diethanamide, and generically also termed as acid. Firstly, how do you feel when taking this? Well, you may feel energized, excited, confused, anxious. How long does it take for it to work? On average, it can take between 20 minutes and two hours. The effects last from six to 12 hours, and I will explain why this is later from a scientific standpoint. It can be sought as small squares, so as a solid, or can be taken as a liquid. There is no taste to it when consuming. In most cases, taking LSD makes you feel euphoric, meaning elated or joyful. But it can also trigger some unpleasant situations or hallucinations, as we will later see. So, given this, what are the risks involved? Well, if you already have mental health problems, taking LSD could make them worse, in fact. If you feel panic on a trip, for example, when consuming, it can make you have, as an example, a bad nightmare. Therefore, people in a bad mood should avoid taking a drug in very large quantities. This is in most cases, as some people may benefit from short-term relief. Circumstances of short-term relief would be a reduction in stress levels and lowered depression. Although these are not long-lasting and provide temporary solutions only. On a legal basis, it is a class A drug, and this is determined by the Misuse of Drugs Act 1971. So it is illegal to have, and you could get up to seven years in jail or have an unlimited fine if discovered that you are in possession of LSD. In certain countries, there are exceptions to this rule, but they remain a minority. The main argument for its use in the places where it is allowed is talking about its possible medical advantages. Some even say that LSD can be used for cultural purposes, for spiritual experiences, and consequently religious practices, and should be legalized solely for that use. The debate around this is active. So how does it work exactly? And what is the chemistry uh, behind it? The chemical formula is C20H25N3O. That is 20 carbon atoms, 25 hydrogen atoms, three nitrogen atoms, and one oxygen atom. LSD interacts with proteins on the surface of brain cells called serotonin receptors by binding to them in a complementary manner. Researchers found out that LSD binds to receptor in a way that causes it to act mostly through the beta arrestin pathway. Instead of the G protein, heterotrimeric guanine nucleotide binding proteins pathway. Also, it is found out that the serotonin receptor closes a lid over the LSD molecule, preventing it from detaching quickly and explaining its long lasting effects of up to 12 hours. And on the slide, we can see the 2D structure 
OBLS be displayed over here. But what does the beta arresting uh, pathway uh, really involve? Well, beta arrestins have been shown to act as scaffold proteins or signal transducers for key inflammatory signaling molecules and receptor tyrosine kinases, RTKs, signal reduction pathways. We have an example of a beta arrestin pathway and the cascade reactions it can lead to. Um, they often interact with GPCRs, so G protein coupled receptors, and their various subtypes, such as beta arrestin 1 and beta arrestin 2. And put simply, beta arrestins are proteins that have emerged to be highly important factors in signaling pathways in cells. And uh, they are proteins that have also been linked to the role in breast cancers, for example. Overall, the pathways are very complicated, but a brief outline is nevertheless interesting. What, if, what are the physiological impacts of LSD on the body? They include, in most cases, dilated pupils, profuse sweating of skin, high blood pressure, that is hypertension, dryness of mouth, increased heart rate. The medical term we use for this is tachycardia, where the heart rate is over 100 beats per minute. Nausea, muscle weakness, tremors, numbness, and increase, uh, increased temperature. Therefore, the molecule must be taken in moderation if someone does decide to take it and assess his or her risks too. In many cases, people use the technique of microdosing to achieve this. Let us look a bit at the history and its origins. Albert Hoffman, born in 1906, was a Swiss chemist who first synthesized LSD by isolating compounds found in ergot, a fungus. It was at the University of Zurich in 1938, while testing the stimulant properties of ergot derivatives, that Hoffman discovered LSD-25, the 25th such derivative tested. However, it was not until 1943, when he returned to his work on the compounds, that he realized that it triggered and caused hallucinations. In fact, this was an accident, as he unintentionally absorbed some of the drug whilst experimenting. For years, he then spent investigating LSD's hallucinogenic properties and had a conviction that one day it may be utilized for psychiatric patients. Although he recommended the amount to be dosed very carefully, as it has never been used on humans before, of course. And uh, Hoffman proceeded to retire in the year 1971. So to conclude, how's it related to the topic, LSD? Well, since our presentation revolves around psychedelics, LSD is just very important to discuss as it is a prominent psychedelic and is one of the most widely used among them. We can see how this substance can alter the neurology of the brain and consequently how a perception of the environment can change too. This is interesting from a psychological perspective and may be used as a basis for future research in the field of mood disorders and how they could be potentially treated and cared for. With these techniques, we may also be able to control emotions more accurately. But the balance of risks and benefits must be weighed carefully. As, of course, the goal is to provide more benefit than harm at the end of the day. Thank you very much for listening.